Now is the second coming of the pandemic is upon us. It means enforcing more draconian lockdowns and restrictions on people as per 2020 then the economy will enter a final tailspin that even unlimited trillions of dollars won't stop. California is cutting down dried up almond trees. Food prices will rise. Central Valley wells have gone dry. Well drillers are booked months in advance drilling deeper. Fires may cut power supplies again this year. Fires as far away as Siberia and Europe due to climate change. Hydroelectric capacity is reduced. Worst drought in 1000 years according to one source. No signs of a housing crash in my area. Stock market near record highs. Families receiving $300 per child a month emergency pandemic stimulus. Big Pharma building out billions of doses per year vaccine production. Unemployment is high due to big government paying them not to work. Massive emergency rent and mortgage forbearance and homeless people in the streets. Wall Street and the Fed are an economic tag team helping the same small cabal. The Fed knows exactly what it is doing, why it is doing it, and whom it will hurt. Intentional carnival of asset bubbles enlarging every day, enticing more retail suckers to get in the game, then pop goes the bubble. All about timing though. Lack of transparency in the margin, stock arena. This should give everyone pause. China and India have been stockpiling gold for years. Housing costs are insane in many areas worldwide. Bail-ins have been written in the fine print of bank notices. Banks are more bloated than post-2008 due to mergers and acquisitions. Big banks and hedges fund the payday loan stores and lack transparency like much of the financial sector. How many of those risky loans never got paid back? How much student loan debt is late? When all fiat currencies collapse simultaneously and they will the cryptocurrency will have the same value of the fiat, zero. Gold doesn't have that problem because gold is money and has zero counterparty risk. Gold will always have value in a sea of worthless fiat, silver will have value as well. Whack-a-mole inflation is what is in the cards. Some items going up 30 to 40 percent. The problem comes when the government continuously pours more and more money, injecting it into the economy to give it a short-term boost, which eventually triggers a fundamental breakdown in the economy. In their efforts to prevent any downturn in the economy, monetary authorities continue to expand the supply of money and credit at an accelerating pace and avoid turning off the taps of money supply until it is too late. From my perspective, all the essentials of life have become much more expensive, not only in last six months but in last ten years. Rents have doubled, home prices have doubled, food prices have increased, utility prices have increased quite a lot, gas prices up, cost of education has gone up, medical, insurance, etc. have gone up year on year. The inflation is not 5% but much much higher, but the government would manipulate the data as much as they can. The purchasing power of the dollar gets shredded, in large part due to the actions of the Fed and Uncle Sam's debt which influences the Fed's actions. The debasement of paper currency by people in either elected or unelected positions is a phenomenon as old as humanity. The US is effectively on our fifth currency, the continental, greenbacks, graybacks, redeemable Fed resnotes, and now irredeemable Fed resnotes. I'd suggest figuring out how to have a voice in what type of monetary system comes next, and which is compatible with liberty. How this ends shouldn't be a mystery for anyone with access to the internet. I thought the Fed's plan for this increase in inflation was to start bringing down the massive US debt, when the only thing this is doing is killing off the working man and woman's chances of affording their quality of life. I do fear that our debt as a nation will be the end of us. There is zero reason the United States or any other developed country that has not suffered some kind of terrible disaster or the effects of war should have debt. Neither should most middle-class households not having had some kind of unfortunate medical financial emergency. It's a cultural and societal problem. In short, we've been fools that got comfortable. I don't imagine anything will change unless something very, very, very difficult causes us to process our mistakes. The Fed has covertly funneled so much money to its banksters for decades that the US now cannot afford to meet its obligations if interest rates rise to what were normal levels historically. Federal interest payments will grow so much with even a 4% increase in interest rates, way below what Volcker used to stop inflation, that huge portions of the federal government would have to be just cut now, e.g., either Medicare or the US Air Force. 
I used to like him, but I realized eventually that he was just a bankster's crony, because he enabled the continuation of the misconduct of his Fed. His Federal Reserve is the world's biggest and most destructive parasite and has sucked out the wealth of Americans like a leech sucks out the blood from its victims. With zero interest rates and inflation running at 10%, the dollar will turn to confetti. All Americans will end up poor like what happened in Argentina. The average person won't even be able to afford a loaf of bread. The Fed has been captured by Wall Street and is creating dangerous asset bubbles. What the Fed has created on Wall Street is a giant bloodsucker that is sucking more than twice the blood out of the rest of the economy. The Federal Reserve is unconstitutional since 1913 and should be done away with. This is 95% of our inflation problems and debt in the world. Trash the Federal Reserve today. That's what we Americans should be doing is getting rid of the Federal Reserve. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. Various indicators in the economy are pointing to the signs that an inevitable recession is coming, which has been at the center of financial news for over the last few months. As a result of this there's been a spike in recession fears throughout the nation. So what do you do when the recession happens, and how can you prepare now? I'll tell you what most people will do. Now, in the good times, they're going to enjoy it while it lasts they'll rack up credit card debt, car loans, mortgages, and student loans. Why save money when debt is so cheap and easy to get? Besides times are good. They optimistically ignore the possibility of a decline. For millennials especially, the good times are all they've ever known. One day soon, these people will be in for a shock. That nice stable job suddenly looks a lot less stable. The payments start coming due on those loans, and it becomes a lot harder to get new loans. They begin to default. They begin to sell off assets to make ends meet. Not a fun time. I've decided not to allow myself to be in that position. As a product of the system, I've made a lot of the mistakes that you're supposed to make along the way. I spent what I made, sometimes more. I racked up some credit card debt, financed a car, and of course, took out tens of thousands of dollars of student loans for an economics degree that didn't even teach me how to benefit from economic cycles. I've taken jobs I hated that paid me next to nothing because I didn't think there were any other options. I've put money into 401k plans, but that was the extent of my investing. I had a few thousand in a savings account, but not enough for any real peace of mind or opportunities. As I mentioned above, I've been making improvements lately, but there's still a long way to go. My plan to prepare for the next recession is as follow. Number 1. Financial security. This is the first priority, and I define it, first is getting completely out of debt. The student loans and car loans are paid off. Now there's just the credit cards left, and those should be taken care of by the end of this year if I stick to my aggressive payoff schedule. Number 2. Cash reserves. Next, build up a large cash cushion in the bank. Several months or more of living expenses in case something unexpected happens. But this is more than just insurance against failure, it's also a stash of dry powder. In a recession, things get cheap, and I need to be prepared to take advantage. Besides things bother you a lot less when you have cash in the money. Number 3. Preserve value. Your investments are going to lose value. Maybe a lot of it. First of all, don't be stupid and sell at the bottom. Second, once I have a bit of cash socked away, I plan to convert some of it into something more inflation resistant. Precious metals are the obvious choice, but there are others. I'm not to this stage yet, and I still need to do more research. Number 4. Diversify income sources. I could easily have listed this first. If your income is totally dependent on a job, even a good job, you're taking a huge gamble. People talk about side hustles. Now is a good time to get started. I've been neglecting this for a long time, but I have a few things in progress and I'm always looking for more ideas to work on. The more income sources you have, the better. Basically, my attitude right now is to take advantage while times are good. And I don't mean buying useless crap. It has never been easier to start a business or side hustle. Remember all those people racking up credit card debt? They can use it to pay for your product or service. If you need investor funding, try to avoid this if you can, profit is always better, it has never been easier to get. If you need another job, you can probably find one. 
If you ask your boss for a raise, you'll probably get it. Do everything you can now to increase your income as much as possible. People talk about building great, sustainable business empires, and that's a worthy goal, but now is the time to grab money. Be a bit unsustainable in terms of effort. Don't do anything illegal or unethical, this will backfire on you. And then there's the other side of the equation. Expenses. Keep them as low as possible. Again, this can be unsustainable for now. You want to increase that cushion and reduce debt as fast as possible. Skip the $8 coffees and don't upgrade your SUV this year. Always spend less than you make. Consider selling off some of your old stuff you don't need now. Prices are going to crater on a lot of this stuff when the market shifts. Take your cash off the table now. People think of economic downturns as a universally bad thing, but this is only the case for the unprepared. By planning ahead and organizing your life intelligently, it can actually be a huge buying opportunity for those who can survive the immediate negative effects. Grow some food, even vertically indoors. Agitate for community gardens. Super insulate and hang heavy drapes, tapestries. Big Buddy portable propane heater or a rocket stove may be helpful. Learn to repair things, wikiHow. Barter goods, services with neighbors while setting up a mutual aid network. Eat different, less popular foods. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.